Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we are out here at my surplus geodesic radar dome. We got this a few episodes back from a former NATO base up in Canada, brought it down to Sandland, my friend's off-grid property in Wisconsin, reassembled it, and soon we're going to have a radio telescope in here. Basically a giant satellite dish inside of this dome that we can use for radio astronomy, for snooping on satellites, and all kinds of other scientific-ish experiments. Now, to do stuff like that, we are going to need power, and sand lead is completely off-grid. We do not have city electricity. We don't have any utilities out here. We've talked about getting city power out here, but it's slow to do, it's expensive, and personally, I don't think we need it. I don't think a relatively small radio observatory is going to use all that much power. I think we can run almost completely off of batteries and solar panels. I'd like to thank Bouge RV for supplying all of the solar panel equipment that we're going to be using today. So this is a sponsored video, but as with any of my sponsored videos, I'm going to be very fair and honest. I'm going to tell you any problems I experience with this stuff right along with the good stuff. And yes, even though it is a sponsored review, I'm actually going to be using this stuff and installing it permanently. So I'm looking forward to using this equipment. We've got 200 watt solar panels, two of those. We have two 12 volt batteries. We've got a charge controller and we have a pure sine wave inverter. I did a brief unboxing and initial checkout of this stuff back home before we came out here today. So we'll cut over there for a second. Now, before we get started, I did notice there is quite a bit of damage to these. And sadly, this is my typical FedEx delivery experience. Most of the packages I get with them look like this. All right, this one looks fine. I don't see any cracks or damage. It looks like we got lucky. Despite the packages being smashed up, the actual panels seem to be okay. So Bouge RV did a really good job of packing these so that they would survive all the rough treatment FedEx gave them. In addition to the solar panels, we have this charge controller. And right out of the box, this looks like a decent unit. I've played around with some cheaper solar charge controllers and they do not look this nice. This even has an RS-45 serial port so you can talk to it with a computer and get a better idea of what your system is doing. For the output side of things, we have a pure sine wave inverter. Now these are really nice because a pure sine wave is closer to what an actual city power line puts out. They're not a choppy square wave that can damage sensitive electronics. And since I'm doing scientific stuff with this, or I plan to, a sine wave inverter is ideal for that. This box also took some damage from FedEx, but I think the inverter itself is okay. It comes with this little remote control panel. And again, just from looking at it, it seems like a, a pretty solidly made device. I do have some experience with off-grid power systems. Since I grew up in Alaska, we lived on an island, and we used things like small solar, small hydroelectric, and generator power, along with a sine wave inverter and a battery bank. So. This is not uh, it's too unfamiliar. Then finally we have the batteries. I got two of these and they were shipped separately with UPS. There's actually much less damage on the boxes. UPS just takes better care of their packages. This video is not sponsored by any shipping company, by the way. I just find that certain companies do a better job. Others are cheaper and they're cheaper for a reason. Pretty standard looking battery in here. This is about the same size as a car battery and this would easily fit into an RV's battery compartment or a boat or an off-grid cabin or really anywhere else that you'd want to use it. Now this is a fairly complete set but it did not come with any wires other than some very short stub wires to go from the battery to the inverter. So to actually set up the system, connect all of the pieces together, connect the solar panels to the inverter, to the charge controller, to the batteries, I will have to stop at a hardware store along the way and pick up a few accessories. I spent around $100 on heavy gauge wiring, crimp tools, heat shrink, zip ties, electrical tape, just extra stuff that I figured I would need to put all this together. Now on that topic, I should note one initial problem that I've already experienced with this. And that problem is these connectors. This is called an MC4 connector. They come in a male and female variant. They are super common with solar panel equipment and they are not common for anything else. In fact, I can't find these in the wild in the US. I tried three different hardware stores on the way out here today. Nobody had them. I even took in a picture of this. I took in the specifications to a major chain hardware store. The electrical department looked at it and said, what is that? We've never seen that before. So I can't get the connectors to connect to these solar panels. I could have ordered these on Amazon if I had thought about it earlier, but I didn't think about it before I came out here. I figured I'll just stop at the hardware store. Every solar panel has an MC4 connector. The major chain hardware stores will have that. No, they've never heard of that. So. 
I might end up having to chop this off and just crimp on a wire or use some other connector that's more common at US hardware stores. Keep that in mind, if you buy a system like this, you'll have to buy the wiring and you will have to buy connectors. So you may have to get those on Amazon if your country or location doesn't typically carry these on the shelf. Now I'm also going to need some sort of framework to mount these on. As you might expect from the name, Bouge RV is designed for RVs, camper vans, trailers. These are supposed to go flat on the roof of a recreational vehicle. I'm using them on a flat surface on the ground. I don't really want to lay them flat on the ground because they'll build up dirt and debris. People might step on them, animals will step on them, and they won't be 100% efficient. We want them aimed probably at a 45 degree angle towards the sun. Fortunately, I am out here at Sandland and we have a bunch of random spare parts and scrap parts around that I can use. I have some scrap lumber I can use and we actually have a bunch of old trampolines some of these are falling apart, the trampoline netting has ripped or been lost, and I think I can use some of the frames. I also don't have the dome 100% set up yet. It's about the same as you saw in the prior video if you've been following my geodesic dome project. The inside is basically just mud. We don't have any benches or shelves. For now, I just want to get the solar panels installed. I want to get the batteries roughly in place, make sure everything works. We don't really have anything to use the power yet. We don't have any computers out here. We don't have the big dish yet. So we're just getting prepared for future use when we want to run that equipment. Maybe we want to run power tools. Maybe we want to charge batteries on other stuff. So having the solar panel system set up first is definitely going to help with the ongoing project of getting the dome set up. shelving to set up here inside the dome and yes the audio in here is crazy because there's nothing in here so it's just a giant echo chamber. Before I hook up the solar panels, I need to do a little bit more setup on the charge controller and the inverter. So we can do that over Bluetooth with an app, or we could do it on the screen with some push button displays. The app is a little bit problematic. It wants me to sign in and create an account. If we're completely off grid and we don't have internet connectivity, then signing into an app is kind of dumb. Eventually I'll set up more of a monitoring station or a command center, but for now everything's just going to sit on this shelf. All right, we found both of our devices. We also need to connect this little sensor to the battery and this will help the charge controller monitor the battery temperature, make sure nothing gets overheated. Since I have two batteries, I'm just gonna put this on the closest one that's hooked directly to the charge controller. I have them in parallel right now so they both get charged and they both get discharged, but I can only monitor one at a time. 50 feet of wire is almost not enough to get out to where I wanna put the solar panels. Uh, this is 10 gauge wire. The specifications called for 12 gauge. I just went a little bit bigger and this wire was most of the money that I spent outside of the actual solar panel system. Each of these little baby spools is like $40. And I'm trying really hard to get this done while there is still sunlight. We are rapidly losing that. It is almost five o'clock. I'm trying to get this finished in this video because I won't be back out here for another week or so and I'd like to wrap this up. All right, everything is finally hooked up or at least temporarily hooked up. We're gonna have to redo some of this later, but we are aimed at kind of the last of the evening sun and we are making some power. So the charge controller is around 13.7 volts. We're making about 22 amps. I had to come back outside. It's just too hard to talk inside the dome. The audio is crazy. So yeah, we are making uh, 300 watts out of a theoretical 400 watt. Again, the sun is kind of low, so we're not getting peak efficiency right now. If I went out and tilted the solar panels towards the sun, I think we would be getting 400 watts, which is great. Um, solar panels usually don't put out exactly what they're rated for, but these are putting out quite a bit of juice. So that is fantastic. I think this will run everything I wanna run here at the dome. We've got all of our other statistics here in the app. We have battery temperature, outside temperature. We don't have a load right now because I don't have anything hooked up to it other than the inverter, but in the future we can monitor our load usage so we can actually figure out, do we have enough power for what we wanna run? Are we draining the batteries faster than we refill them during the day? Do we have enough battery power at night from a full day of solar exposure? Those are all things we can 
and figure out in the future. I think this is going to work pretty well though because the solar panels are pretty large. They seem pretty efficient. Um, as long as we get a good sun coverage up here and this is the sunniest part of Sandland, I think we're going to be pretty well set. Again, I'll have to play around with where do we want the solar panels to live full time. They're just over there right now, which isn't ideal. That's actually north of the dome. So at certain sun angles, especially in the winter, the dome shadow would probably fall on the panels where they sit now. So we might end up moving those. We might move them around to the other side of the dome. Um, I don't want the panels to interfere with my radio telescope, so we'll have to consider that as well. But that's all stuff for the future. They're pretty easy to move. They're on that little sled system that I set up. The last thing that I need to do with that sled is put some weight on it just to keep these from flying away if we get a big windstorm. And again, we're up on top of the hill. We get the most solar exposure up here, but we also get the most wind. So I don't want the panels to fly away or tip over. So I'm gonna grab some sandbags, throw those on the uh, structure that I have them built onto, and that'll just hold them down. And if we wanna move them, we can pull the sandbags off easily enough. I know I said sandbags, but I found some rocks instead. All right, that should keep it in one place. Since we're in the Midwest, I know somebody will ask about hail protection, and they actually test these by dropping steel ball bearings on them. So they're apparently pretty strong, and the glass is armored to some extent, so they can withstand decent sized hail. If we get softball sized hail, well, that's gonna destroy everything up here, but we'll just cross our fingers on that one. It's kind of a giant mess in here. We've got toolboxes and ladders and just junk everywhere. We're still working on the dome. Um, so yeah, eventually we're gonna have probably some benches along the sides, but having power in here is a big step to finishing the dome project because now we can run more power tools, we can charge equipment, we can test things out, and this is a great next step along the way. So big, big thanks to Bouge RV for supplying the solar panels, the charge controller, the inverter, the batteries. This is a fantastic package. It helps out the dome project. It helps the channel grow because now we can do more stuff out here. I can do more videos. I can do more science, satellite tracking stuff. All kinds of future projects are being enabled by having this solar panel system. So. Thank you guys, that is awesome. If you wanna check out Bouge RV for yourself, uh, pick up a package like this or one of their other solar panel packages. I will throw links down in the description below. Stay tuned for my future dome videos. We will be doing lots more projects out here over the summer. And if you're not familiar with the dome, you can go back and check my prior videos about bringing the thing down from Canada, getting it set up out here and all the stuff that we've done so far. Finally, thank you to everyone out there for watching and we'll see you next time.